Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the parts of the brain. I am GB Sebastian and welcome to GB Sebastian online. If you are new to this channel please do subscribe. Okay. And uh, let me move on to the topic of today. The parts of the brain. So the brain is situated is an organ which is situated within the cranial cavity. and it's been protected by bones of the skull and exactly the bones of the cranium frontal bone parietal bone occipital bone tem- uh, temporal bone sphenoid bone ethmoid bone these are the bones of the cranium and the brain is situated within the cavity within the cranium and is protected from all sides by the bones of the cranium so let's uh, discuss about parts of the brain today the first part we are going to discuss is cerebrum then midbrain then pons middle oblongata and the cerebellum so here is the is the structure uh, the diagram of the brain here this portion this portion is the cerebrum okay this is the cerebrum then down to that here here is the midbrain and below down to that is the pons and down to that is medulla oblongata and posterior to the pons is the hindbrain or the cerebellum okay so continue in continuation to that of the medulla oblongata is the spinal cord the largest part this is cerebrum then next is the midbrain then to its uh, distal end is pons then it's the medulla oblongata then to the posterior to the posterior part of the pons that is cerebellum okay moving further let's discuss about the cerebrum so this is the largest part of the brain the largest part of the brain is cerebrum and it occupies the anterior and the middle cranial fossa this occupies the anterior as well as the middle cranial fossa majority of it is occupied in the anterior as well as the middle cranial fossa and the longitudinal cerebral fissure this cerebral fissure a longitudinally in the middle that divides the cerebrum into the right and the left half or the right and the left cerebral hemispheres so there is longitudinal cerebral fissure dividing it into right and the left cerebral hemisphere dividing the cerebral brain into two equal halves so this is this is the the longitudinal fissure which divides it into uh, right and the left cerebral hemispheres so the, the the cerebral hemispheres are connected by a mass of nerve fibers it has been connected so here the cerebral hemisphere the cerebral hemisphere right and the left is been connected by a mass of a uh, nerve fibers and that is called corpus callosum corpus callosum here you can see this is a hemisphere this is another one okay and is been connected by a mass of nerve fibers called corpus callosum that's called the corpus callosum okay uh, superficially to its periphery sup- superficially the cerebrum consists of nerve cell bodies the superficial parts of the cerebrum consist of nerve cell bodies and this nerve cell body they form the gray matter they form gray matter and it is called cerebral cortex the superficial portion so the superficial the peripheral portions of the cerebrum are called cerebral cortex so you can see that here this one this parts and this is uh, cerebral cortex and to its interior there are nerve fibers and that forms the white matter 
that's the white matter the periphery is gray matter and to its inner it's white matter okay towards the center towards the middle towards the center it is composed of nerve fibers and they form the white matter and on the surface of the cerebral cortex there are infoldings on the surface of the cerebral cortex you can see there are there are infoldings on the surface of the cerebral cortex and these infoldings are called the sulcus they are called the sulcus and that singular is sulcus and plural is sulci s u s u l c i sulci sulci are when it is when we talk about plural n number of sulcus so those infoldings are called um, sulcus and there are ridges on the surface so these are ridges that are seen on the surface they are called gyrus in plural it is gyri okay gyrus they are called the gyrus those those projections those ridges on the surface are called gyrus so let's first discuss about this sulcus of the cerebrum the sulci of the cerebrum or sulci of the cerebrum. the main sulci or the sulcus include central sulcus these are present on both side of the cerebral he- um, cerebral hemisphere so they are central sulcus lateral sulcus and parieto occipital sulcus uh, central sulcus lateral sulcus and parieto occipital sulcus let's see where is it so this sulcus this one this one here is central sulcus the central sulcus and the sulcus which is here is the lateral sulcus and a sulcus here between the parietal and occipital lobes and they are parieto occipital sulcus so central sulcus in the same way they are also present on the other side other cerebral hemisphere so here is the central sulcus then the lateral sulcus and the parieto occipital sulcus Uh, now these sulcuses divides the cerebrum into lobes so let's discuss about the lobes the cerebral hemisphere is divided into lobes and they are named according to the name of the bone under which they lie so let's see that say there is frontal bone the lobe of the cerebrum present under the cere- uh, uh, frontal bone is front frontal lobe the frontal lobe of the cerebrum then the the part of the brain present under the parietal lobe is uh, parietal uh, uh, bone is parietal lobe then towards posterior there is occipital bone and the lobe of the cerebrum present in it uh, under the occipital bone is occipital lobe and to its side there are temporal bones and the part which is present uh, in it to that set temporal bones and they are temporal lobes so frontal lobe parietal lobe occipital lobe and temporal lobes lobe are the lobes of the cerebrum so if you can you can see here this is this is present this is the anterior part and this is the posterior part of the cerebrum and uh, here you can see the frontal lobe and this the sulcus here is the central uh, sulcus and uh, this lobe is the parietal lobe and the the there is a sulcus here that is lateral sulcus and uh, here this one is the temporal lobe and there is a sulcus here uh, that is parieto occipital sulcus and this lobe here is occipital lobe these are the lobes of the cerebrum frontal lobe then parietal lobe then side on the side is temporal lobe and on the back is occipital lobe okay so the functions of the cerebrum the functions of the cerebrum include sensory perception motor functions and higher mental functions sensory perception motor function and higher mental functions and sensory perception or sensory perception include uh, it is uh, the sense of touch the sense of pain temperature pressure smell taste etc it is receiving impulses sensory inputs sensory impulses from all these area and is helping in the sense of touch sense of pain 
sense of temperature pressure smell taste etc and the motor functions include uh, the motor functions such as initiation and control of skeletal muscles so it initiate or control the skeletal muscles contractions and the higher mental activities or mental functions such as uh, intelligence thinking reasoning judgment memory all these are some of the higher mental functions uh, of the cerebrum and let's discuss about the midbrain okay the it is situated between the cerebrum above and pons below uh, it is between the cerebrum above and the pons below and it is a part of the brain stem a part of the brain stem brain stem is formed of midbrain pons and medulla oblongata the brain stem is composed of the bra- uh, midbrain then the pons and the medulla oblongata so this is midbrain is the upper part the first part of the brain stem and a one of the part of the brain stem and you can see that here so this is uh, the cerebrum and this midbrain is present uh, between the cerebrum between the cerebrum above and the pons below so this this part is the midbrain okay then the nerve fibers of the midbrain there are a nerve fibers and nuclei present in the midbrain the nerve fibers of the midbrain connect the cerebrum with the lower parts of the brain and the spinal cord so nerve fibers they are connecting the cerebrum the upper part with the lower part of the brain and as well as the spinal cord and the different parts of the body and the nuclei there are nuclei the group of cell bodies and the nuclei is present in the midbrain they act as relay stations they they just uh, pass on signals to different parts of the, of the cerebrum okay so they just act as relay station they they receive the impulses and carry forward the impulses so they those are nuclei and there are nerve fibers they transmit the nerve impulse uh from the and they connect the cerebrum with the different parts of the body the lower parts of the uh, the brain as well as the spinal cord and different parts of the body and now we'll discuss about the pons and they are situated between the midbrain above and uh, medulla oblongata below between the midbrain and the medulla oblongata and that's pons and it is present anterior to the cerebellum anterior to the cerebellum to its posterior the the, the, the structure present is uh, cerebellum and so this bones pons is present anterior to the cerebellum and the pons consist of nerve fibers and nuclei they to contain nerve fibers as well as nuclei these nerve fibers they just transmit nerve impulse they transmit nerve impulse and nuclei they act as relay stations as we discussed earlier so here midbrain then uh, here is the pons and down to that is medulla oblongata so this is pons and the pons is present anterior to the hindbrain or the cerebellum cerebellum is present posterior to the pons or pons is present anterior to the cerebellum okay so some of the nuclei some nuclei of the pons they form pneumotoxic and uh, apneustic centers pneumotoxic and apneustic centers and these centers are involved in the control of respiration these centers are some of the nuclei they form these centers apneustic and uh, pneumotoxic centers and they work uh, along with the respiratory center of the medulla oblongata in the respiratory this in the medulla oblongata there is a center called respiratory center these uh, two centers pneumotoxic and apneustic center they work in uh, work along with the respiratory center present in the medulla oblongata to control respiration okay and the gray matter consists of nerve cell bodies then the gray matter as we discussed earlier in the cerebrum in the cerebrum also in the cerebrum the the peripheral parts consist of nerve cell bodies and they form the gray matter and here within the pons they are they are present deep in the pons they are present at the center of the pons and whereas it is the reverse it is the opposite in the cerebrum as well as in the midbrain and the there the gray matter is present towards the periphery and here in the pons they present deep within the pons 
and the white matter consists of nerve fibers and they are present on the surface so if you see the cross section of the of the pons the the gray matter is present at the center and uh, white matter is at the, at the periphery okay then medulla oblongata they are situated between the pons above and spinal cord below pons is the structure which is present above and uh, spinal cord is present below so this medulla oblongata is present between these two structures the last part of the brain stem this is the last part of the brain stem and this is situated within the cranium this is again with is present within the cranium within when the within the cranial cavity and this is just present above the foramen magnum there is a hole on the base of the brain there is a hole foramen magnum and this part of the uh, the medulla oblongata this this structure is present above the foramen magnum and they continue as the spinal cord below this continues as spinal cord below and the spinal cord will be present within the vertebral canal and now here so uh, mid brain then down is the pons and down to that distal to that is medulla oblongata and medulla oblongata continue as spinal cord so this is this medulla oblongata is present between the pons and the spinal cord pons above and spinal cord below the gray matter is at the center as we discussed in the pons uh, it is gray matter is at the center and white matter at the periphery and its nuclei there are nuclei they act as relay stations and some of them some of the nuclei of the medulla oblongata they form vital centers and the vital centers of such as respiratory center cardiovascular center and reflex centers respiratory center which controls respiration then cardiovascular center which controls um, uh, the rate and force of cardiac contractions and uh, reflex centers they are the reflex centers for um, coughing sneezing and then vomiting all these okay. then uh, now we are moving on to the last part of the brain that is the cerebellum and this is present behind the pons as we discussed earlier this is present behind the pons and just below the posterior part of the cerebrum just below the posterior part of the cerebrum and occupy the posterior cranial fossa occupying the posterior cranial fossa and it this too has uh, two hemisphere as like the cerebrum cerebrum has two hemisphere that the same way cerebellum has also got two cerebellar hemispheres and the gray matter is just like the cerebrum so gray matter is at the periphery at the outer aspects then white matter is at the center of the cerebrum cerebellum and the functions of the cerebellum if you see the functions of the cerebellum this helps in the maintenance of posture and balance it maintains the posture and balance of the body and let's see how does it maintain the post posture and balance so it receives sensory impulses from the eyes they receive the impulses from the eye then they receive impulses from the ears they receive impulses from the muscles and the joints and they provide information these impulses sensory imp inputs from all these areas they provide information to the cerebellum about the position of head in the f in in the space position of head and the position of muscles and the joints in the space and thus it is they they receive and uh, interpret and coordinate all these in uh, sensory impulses from all these areas and they maintain balance and posture and that that was about the parts of the brain and thanks for watching and if you are new to this channel please do subscribe like and share you can also visit uh, another channel nursing edutech and for more videos and uh, that link will be given in the description please um, thank you very much